happy crafters and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a thing because every week we are posting brand new crafting tutorials, tips, and tricks to help you level up your crafting game and you will not want to miss it. And you definitely don't want to miss today because we are talking about fonts. Maybe you've had this experience where you've downloaded a font off the internet and then it is not in Cricut Design Space so you don't know how to use it. Today we're going to solve that problem for you and talk about where to find good fonts, how to download them, how to import them into Cricut Design Space, and then even how to use them and utilize those special characters that come with fonts sometimes so you can make your crafting projects extra special and unique. This is going to be a quick one, but it's also going to help you put a new skill in your crafting repertoire. So let's jump right over to the computer and get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is where to find good fonts. There are several places across the internet where you can find fonts, both free and paid, and I'm going to show you my favorite places to hunt them down. The first place and my absolute favorite is designbundles.net. I'm fortunate enough to get to create content for design bundles, and I truly, truly love this company. They have the best customer service that I think I've ever experienced with a digital design company, and they also have some of the best fonts on the internet. Absolutely amazing. So let's jump right into it. Let me kind of show you where to find them on their site. So on Design Bundles, they do have a full fonts tab, and you can even display only the free fonts to see what you can download for free, whether you have a Design Bundles Plus membership or not. And you can see there's some really cool ones in here. Um, we'll use a free font today just so you can kind of see what that would look like. But I do want to go ahead and tell you that you can get a Plus membership with Design Bundles, which is what I have. I highly recommend it. You can download so many fonts um, in addition to these free ones, and all of them are absolutely incredible. And not not only that, but something I love about Design Bundles is their fonts are free for commercial use and a commercial use license is included with any Pro and Plus fonts you download. What that essentially means is if you own an Etsy shop or you have a crafting business and you want to create products that have this font included in the design, you are able to do that under the commercial license. That's usually something you have to pay extra for. It's really nice that it's included with Design Bundles. So let's just pick a font um, and we'll talk about downloading it. We'll grab one from here, but before we do that, I wanna hop over and show you two other quick font places. The second is one that you've probably heard about a lot. It's defont.com. These are free fonts. They do not include a commercial license, but it has some good search features up here. So I like that you can kind of filter your search by maybe what you're looking for. And they have some cool ones on here too. I have used this site before. I just use Design Bundles a lot more frequently now. I wanna let you know that it's here. And then the third one is Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica is um, similar to Design Bundles. I don't think it has quite as many options, but they still have some really cool ones. So I want you to know that this is here as well. They operate really similarly to Design Bundles. They have some free options, and then they also have a subscription kind of model where you can pay and get fonts included in that. I think Creative Fabrica is great. I'm just not quite as familiar with it personally because I tend to use design bundles. So that's just me, but definitely check it out. It is here. Okay, let's hop back over to design bundles really quickly and let's download a font. So this Brick Lane one is really standing out to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and then we'll pick one more so you can kind of see the difference. We'll do this script font as well. So we're gonna grab Brick Lane and the way we do that is we're just gonna click download now and then confirm and it's gonna download straight to my computer. You can see it's gonna hop up right here in my downloads tab on Google Chrome. And if you're not using Google Chrome, it just usually will download to the downloads folder on your computer, which I will show you how to access in just a second. Before we move on though, let's go ahead and download this font as well hitting that confirm button and you can see it's gonna pop up right here. And the way it's gonna pop into your downloads is as a zip file. So the first thing we need to do is unzip that file to see the contents within. If you're unfamiliar with zip files, essentially what this does is take several file folders and zips them up into one compressed document that we then can unzip to see all the different folders inside. So we have our font. I'm gonna go to my finder menu See, I have a lot of things here in my downloads folder. And you can see that here are our two downloaded fonts that we just grabbed. They do pop up in your downloads folder. So if you click on Finder on your computer, you can see under our little menu tab on the left-hand side, I can select Downloads and there they are. They're both zipped and unzipping a zip file is very easy. You just double click. So I'm gonna double click to unzip Brick Lane and then I'm gonna double click again to unzip this second font we downloaded, Mama. 
Now I could double click and look inside and you can see that inside this zipped file we have all these different attributes of the file. So, so it looks like in this particular font they've included these little illustrations that you can use along with it and they've included that as an AI file and an EPS file. Most fonts you download will not include those types of documents but this just has a bonus with it. So. Just know that you normally won't see that, but that's pretty cool that this one includes it. It looks like they've included also just kind of the font image as a JPEG. That's also something you will only sometimes see. And then it's got some links here to frequently asked questions about downloading it. Really the two things that you are always, always, always gonna find if you download a font and the two things you should be looking for are this .otf file and this .ttf file. So there's a little bit of a difference between .otf and .ttf, but for 99.9% .9 of things you're going to be doing with this file, it doesn't matter which one you select. But I do want to take just a second to tell you the difference between an OTF and a TTF file so that you know moving forward what makes them different from each other. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between OTF and TTF very briefly. OTF stands for Open Type Font, and it is a little bit newer than .TTF. It was developed in the 90s, and it uses something called Bezier Curves. I don't know if I'm actually even saying that right, <laughs> to develop the font. So it's a little more advanced, there's more glyphs, there's more ability to create advanced characters, and it's widely compatible, but still considered newer, even though it was created in the 90s. And then the other type is TTF, which is true type font which was created in the 80s and it uses just a little bit of a different mechanism to generate the actual curves and lines of the font but it is again widely compatible because it's kind of the OG it was the first type that was created so really the main difference between the two is TTF is older and way more widely compatible OTF is newer and has a little bit more advanced features but is still largely compatible across most everything that you're going to be using to create fonts so with that being said, I usually go with the OTF font because it's the newer one. It has a little more capabilities, although we're really probably not going to utilize those extra advanced capabilities because we're just putting it in Cricut Design Space. But if you were a graphic designer or an illustrator, that might be a little more important to you to use that OTF font type. So because both work for us, I'm going to go with OTF, but that is the difference between the two. So this is how you grab your font. So we've unzipped our file. We're going to grab the OTF. So I'm just going to double click it. And when I do, it's gonna open a font preview and it's also gonna open my font book app. So font book, you can see it down here, is where all your fonts on your computer are stored. And when I double click it, it automatically opens it into that application. And it's kind of giving me like a little bit of a preview of what it looks like. And there's even a drop down menu up here if there were multiple versions of this file, like italics, bold, or something like that. This one just has regular though. So I'm just gonna look at it, it all looks great. And I'm gonna click install. And when I install that font, it is now gonna show up in my font book. So if I search Brick Lane, there it would be. And I can even click on it and see all the different pieces of that font that have now been installed to my computer. I like to keep this pulled up if I'm using the font in Cricut Design Space, and I'll explain why in just a couple minutes. So keep that pulled up for now, but head back to your downloads folder and let's go ahead and download our other font, Mama. So I'm gonna double click that OTF file. It's gonna bring up font book and the preview and I'm gonna select install. So it is installed in my font book now, and now you're good to open up Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Cricut Design Space here. I'm gonna select new project in the upper right hand corner. I just want a blank canvas today. And I'm just gonna put some text on here so we can see what our font is gonna look like. We're gonna say happy crafting with an exclamation point. And then to select your font, you're gonna go right up here to font and select the drop down menu. And you're gonna see four different tabs. There's Cricut, System, Bookmarked, and Recent. Cricut houses all the fonts that are internal to Cricut Design Space. System houses all the fonts that you've downloaded onto your computer, so that's where we'll find our fonts that we've just downloaded. Bookmarked are any fonts that you've bookmarked using this bookmark feature here. I use that to save my favorites. And then recent are obviously fonts that you've recently used in Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna go to System, and I know that I'm searching for Brick Lane, and it should come up now that we've downloaded it into our font book, and there it is. So once I click on it, it adds it to my canvas here. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and let's go ahead and put the other one in Mama, which is the other font we just downloaded. So you can kind of see them both. So cute. What I do wanna show you 
is how to use the special characters that come with fonts from time to time. So there are keyboard shortcuts to use these special characters, but I think learning keyboard shortcuts is really challenging. <laughs> so I just use my font book. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So let's open up our font book, which should still be down here because you never X'd it out. And let's actually go over to um, Mama. And when I click on it and scroll down, you can see there's all these swooshes that are included with the font, but they're special characters, so they're kind of extra. If I wanna use one, I can click on it, and it will show me what the keyboard shortcut is right here to utilize that. But again, I think that's very hard to remember because for this particular character, I have to use U plus E131. So instead, I just like to click on it, copy, and then I can go into Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna get rid of this G, and I can paste the G that I just grabbed. And then maybe I wanna add a flourish on this side too, so I'll go back to my font book. I'm looking for an H with the swoosh at the beginning, right here, select copy, and then come back. So I've just copied it, and now I paste using Command and V. And when I do that, I get to use these awesome special characters that come with my font, and it can really make your crafting project look that much more special and unique. If we wanna look at what special characters come with Brick Lane, I could go back and look at those. Again, just keeping my font book pulled up for reference and to use these special characters. It looks like they have some pretty fun little ending things too, like maybe I wanna grab this G. Maybe there's a cool H right here. So you can see how you could really play around with these special characters to add that extra element to your design that really makes it pop. And that is really it to downloading fonts from the internet, importing them into Cricut Design Space, and learning how to use them to make your projects that much more special and unique. I hope you loved this tutorial today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I do post crafting tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week, and even cover sometimes crafty business tips and marketing strategies to help you really level up your game if you're trying to turn your crafting hobby into a business. So I hope you had a great time today. I know I did. I will see you back here next week, but until then, happy crafting.